Oh, well, Hare Krishna. Uh, it is September 8th, 2019. We're going to speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, so today uh, we will begin with um, first canto, chapter 3, text 11. So here we go. Uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So text 11, Shashtam, which means the sixth, the sixth incarnation. Shashtam atreer apatyatvam vrittat prapto na suyaya. So in the sixth incarnation, uh, the Lord chose, uh, or, or was actually chosen, the Lord was selected to be the son of Atri and Anasuya. And so he uh, accepted he accepted, he became their son. And Anvik Shikim Alarkaya Praladadi Vyautriva. And he taught or he spoke Anvik uh, Shiki. We'll explain what that means. He spoke, he taught Anvik Shiki to Alarka, Pralada, and others. So, first about his birth, Prabhupada says in his first birth, the Lord incarnated himself as Dattatreya which the word Dattatre actually means given to Atri or, or Datta means given and then Atreya means a son of, so he was given or he gave himself as a son of Atri. The son of Rishi Atri and Anasuya. The history of Dattatreya's birth as the Lord's incarnation is mentioned in the Brahmanda Purana in connection with the story of a devoted wife. It is said there that Anasuya, the wife of Rishi Atri, prayed before Lords Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva as follows, my lords, if you are pleased with me and if you desire me to ask from you some sort of blessings, then I pray that you combine together to become my son. This was accepted by the lords and as Datta Atreya, the Lord expounded the philosophy of the spirit soul and especially instructed Alarka, Pralada, Yadu, Haihaya, Etc. So, one point I've been mentioning in these classes is that if we look at how Krishna incarnates, it tells us a lot about Krishna, the ways in which he chooses to incarnate, uh, and what he does in different incarnations. Krishna not only creates the world, as we know, he creates it and also maintains it. So, maintaining the world. Uh, can mean physical maintenance, just keeping matter in existence. It can also mean maintaining uh, social institutions, such as Varnashram. It can mean uh, maintaining a certain uh, academic, spiritual academic standard by teaching different things. In other words, providing education to the universe. It also includes moral maintenance as when Krishna says he maintains dharma by punishing those who uh, go, egregiously violate the moral law and protecting those who obey the moral law and thus practice virtue. So Krishna's many things, maintaining a universe is actually a multifaceted engagement. And when Krishna, is, I mean, all the Shastras say that Vishnu maintains the universe. And so that involves many different uh, aspects of the universe it involved i mean the physical the political the moral the artistic uh the intellectual these are all different aspects of life and to maintain a universe involves all these things and we see different incarnations of krishna specializing in different aspects of cosmic maintenance so the word anvikshikim uh anvikshiki uh, comes from Anu Iksha. Anu uh, in Sanskrit means to follow, 
but it also means consistently like one after the other follow up you follow up and those who speak spanish and or portuguese will understand the word seguidamente seguir means to follow and then seguidamente so anu is used in that sense uh it can mean like consistently repeatedly following one after the other or simply following as in rupa nuga so in this case uh iksha the verb iksh in sanskrit means uh to see to look at something and uh and so iksha means, you know, taking a good look at something and then repeatedly or so on viksha uh, can mean in that sense, really focusing on something. And here we have a derivative word on ki, which to make a long story short, comes to mean in Sanskrit logic or metaphysics. Uh, trying to understand uh, what constitutes uh, reason, in other words, under what conditions can we say that someone is being reasonable? Under what conditions is it fair, is it fair to say someone is being unreasonable? What is a good argument? And ultimately, once you have these tools of reason and argument, then what do we focus on? Well, we should focus on the highest truth. And so therefore, it becomes rational metaphysics. <coughs> By the way, <coughs> Krishna, <coughs> excuse me, Krishna in the, um, in the Gita gives really emphasis to the importance of intelligence and reason because, for example, in, in verse 1010, <coughs> that very famous verse in the Gita, Tesham, for them, Satata Yuktanam, who are always engaged, always connected to me, always serving, and who are worshiping me, Priti uh, Purvakam, with love, Krishna says, Dadami, uh, Buddhi Yogam Tam. I give Buddhi Yoga, in other words, the practice of higher intelligence, the practice or the application of. Uh, reason, buddhi, a reason of higher intelligence. The dhammi buddhi yogam tam. I give that uh, jaina by which, in other words, by buddhi yoga, by which jaina ma uh, jaina ma upajanti te. By which these devoted souls come to me. So that famous verse, te shang, to those who are always devoted, I. And Krishna doesn't say here, he could say, and in a sense, it's, it's synonymous. He could say, I give bhakti yoga or I give devotion. But he actually says, I give spiritual reason, intelligence, knowing how to understand things logically. And uh, because ultimately, Krishna says four kinds of people approach me. Some people are just suffering. Some people need... Uh, economic help, some people are curious, and some people have knowledge. And Krishna says the people who really understand me are not merely curious or seeking knowledge, but actually have knowledge. Uh, they're the best. And then Krishna says in 719 in the Gita that uh, bahunam janmanam ante, after, at the, literally at the end of many births, bahunam janmanam ante, jnanavan, one who has knowledge surrenders to me. Gyanavan maam prapadyate. So there's a great emphasis in the Gita on understanding, on knowledge, uh, which we should not um, minimize. It, it, it's not just about rituals. I remember when I joined the movement, uh, one of the things that so many devotees said when they joined the movement, like you were born in some family religion, why did you join the Hare Krishna movement? because I didn't just want rituals, I actually wanted knowledge. Now, of course, if you go to a Hare Krishna temple, often on a, an important day, you'll find mostly rituals, which is ironic, right? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So, um, or for example, 
Krishna says in the Gita um, 4.28. The Gita 4.28, uh, Krishna says that um, better than uh, a devotion or worship, which consists of offering paraphernalia. The word dravya means can mean just a material object. Like, for example, when we do arctic then the incense, the, the lamp, the camphor, the water, that's dravya, that's all dravya, like material paraphernalia. And so Krishna here speaks of uh, dravya yagyas, or dravya, which means literally the sacrifice or the offering of this material paraphernalia. And uh, Krishna says, actually it's not 428, this is the uh, wrong verse that brought me to it. I'm just gonna, one second, I'll find the verse. But anyway, what Krishna says is that um, better than that, better than simply offering uh, paraphernalia to me with devotion, I mean, we're talking here about devotion, not a material offering. Uh, oh. Krishna says better than that is offering, the offering of knowledge where you actually, um, just one second, I'll find that for you. Uh, here it is. It's actually verse 433, where Krishna says, Shreyan, better than Dravya Maya Yagya, uh, an offering which just consists of paraphernalia, is uh, Jnana Yagya, where you really devote yourself by cultivating knowledge of Krishna. And Krishna says, Sarvam Karmaki Lampartha. He says that all actions, all rituals, all actions, part the jnane parisamajite culminate in knowledge. So whatever we do, uh, whatever ritual we perform, the purpose is knowledge. It culminates parisamajite. It culminates in knowledge. And what's very interesting about this verse is that the very next verse. The very next verse after this one is 434, Tadvidhi Pranipatena, that learn this knowledge by submission, by thorough inquiries, by service. Upade, you know, as a translated approach of spiritual master, Upadek Shanti Te Gyanam, Gyanina, those who have knowledge will teach you knowledge. It's a very important point. Krishna juxtaposes these two uh, words, Gyanam and Gyaninas. Whenever you see these things in Sanskrit comp composition, it's not just, it's not an accident. It's not just that's the way the words came out. It's, just, it's, it's not only the words that are important, but the order of the words are given in, which words are next to each other. All that actually means something in our literature. And so here, Krishna says, Upadekshanti, which means they will instruct. You know the word Upadesha, instruction, Upadesha Amrita, nectar of instruction. So here we have the future verb. They will instruct. They will instruct te, you. They will instruct you. Or they will teach you. They will teach you knowledge. Those who have knowledge. Gyanam gyaninas. They will teach you knowledge. Those who have knowledge. Those who have seen the truth. Tattva darshina. Which literally means those who have seen the fundamental categories of truth. Which are Vishnu tattva. Jiva Tattva and Prakriti Tattva. In other words, those who, those who know the fundamental principles of reality, they will teach you knowledge because they have knowledge. And in the verse before this famous verse, which translated, learn the truth by approaching a bona fide spiritual master, the, 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 the verse immediately before this says that this cultivation of knowledge, and when Krishna says jnana jagya, or cultivation of knowledge, devotion through knowledge, He's talking about what he describes in the next verse. Tadvidhi. So jnana yagya. What is the real jnana yagya? What is the offering of knowledge? It means that you approach and submit to and serve and inquire from people that really have spiritual knowledge and they will teach you knowledge, people who have seen tattva, tattva darshina. So... In that sense, the process which Krishna describes in 434 of approaching, learning from uh, 
people who have knowledge. Uh, Krishna calls that jnana yagya in the previous verse, and he says that is better. If you engage in this process where you really dedicate your life to trying to understand Krishna and yourself, which of course includes service, it includes service in 434, sevaya, it includes devotional service. Uh, if you do that, that is better, Krishna says. That is better than simply engaging in rituals. That's what Krishna says. And then, because this is all about knowledge. This is all about knowledge. And the next verse, so after Krishna says, learn the truth by approaching those who have knowledge, um, then what does he say? What comes after that? Then Krishna says, Yajyatwa, knowing this. In other words, if you were successful, you approached a bona fide guru, or, or actually Krishna says in the plural, those who have knowledge, knowledge will teach you. So once you've learned, then what happens? What happens when you've learned this knowledge? Then Yajyatwa, Krishna says, knowing this, in other words, once you learn this, Na punar moham evam jasyasi pandava. Thus, uh, you will never again, literally, go to illusion, into illusion. You will never again fall into illusion. If you really understand, you will not again. Krishna says, "Yasyasi." You will not go into to illusion. And and so, how do you know you got the real knowledge? What's the real knowledge? Because anyone can say, okay, I approached people that knew things and now I know those things. And that's what Krishna is talking about. So specifically, what knowledge is Krishna talking about? He said, it is the knowledge by which, yena, bhutani, asheshani, drakshasi, atmani, atomai. It is that knowledge by which, he says, you will see. It's interesting, he's in the future tense. He says, the, those who have knowledge will teach you knowledge. And knowing this, you will see. Draksha see. It's darshana, is seeing. And here's the future. You will see. Draksha see. You will see all living beings are in the supreme soul. In other words, in me. So that's the knowledge that every soul every living being is actually in krishna that's the knowledge that you get by approaching those who have knowledge and uh it's interesting uh for all souls you will see all souls the word krishna actually uses is asheshani bhutani asheshani and uh shesha in sanskrit means a remnant like what's left over and so ashesha means without exception Nothing's left over. And so Bhutani Asheshani literally means all living beings without exception. Without exception. You will see in the soul, capital S, uh, that is in me. And then I want to read the next few verses because uh, this part of the Gita, uh, let's say beginning... Uh, fourth at four um, thirty-three, really, where Krishna says that jnana yagya is better than just offering paraphernalia. Four thirty-three, and then the next verse, the famous verse about approaching a guru or approaching those who have knowledge, and then uh, four thirty-five explains what the knowledge is, what knowledge we're talking about here, and then for the next several verses, Krishna continues to glorify knowledge. So it's interesting that this part of the Gita is really, you get this sustained praise of knowledge, the importance of knowledge, the importance of learning. And so um, Krishna says at 4.36, api chait, asi pa pevyo sarvevyo, papa kritama, even if, api chait, which literally means even if. Api cheta si, even if you are, papebiu sarvebiu, among all sinners, 
even if you are among all sinners, Papa Kritama, the most sinful, the most sinful person among all sinners, even if, and of course, I don't think any of us are really that because there's too much competition out there nowadays, but, but even if among all sinners, you are the most sinful, Sarvangyana Plavain Aiva Brijinam Santarisha Si, you will cross over this calamity, this problem, simply by the boat of knowledge. So uh, plu means to float, plava. So plava means like, like a float or a boat or a raft. That's how you say boat. And so um, Krishna says that um, jnana plavena, there's a jnana plava. There's a boat of knowledge, a raft of knowledge. And just by this, Eva, just by this boat of knowledge, you will cross over this disaster of being the most sinful person, just by this boat of knowledge. And Krishna has more to say about the importance of knowledge. He then says in text 437, Yatai sarva karmani basmasat kurute tata. Just as uh, fire, actually blazing fire, idha means like a, uh, like a, a fire that's that's going. It's really a burning fire, and then semido, a blazing fire. Just as a blazing fire uh, turns firewood, a dangsi, it turns firewood into ashes, Arjuna. So the knowledge fire, the knowledge fire uh, turns all of your material actions or the, or the reactions to them, it turns all of this into ashes. So these are two great verses. We have the jnana plava, the knowledge raft or the knowledge boat. We have jnana agni, the knowledge fire. So it's interesting, we have a water image and a fire image. Knowledge is a boat that takes you over the ocean of your miserable life. And there's a knowledge fire that burns up all of your karmic reactions, which are plaguing you. And then Krishna, but he, he's going to say more. He's not through glorifying knowledge. Then he says, Nahi jnanena sadrasham pavitram iha vidyate. There is no purifier in this world uh, that can be compared that is equal to knowledge. There is no purifier, pavitra. Pavitra actually from the root pu, from which we get the word pure, puro in the Latin languages, that's just Sanskrit, that's pure Sanskrit. So from that root pu, we have pavitra, uh, or uh, the purifier, pavana, the wind as a purifier, or puta, which means something else in other languages, but in Sanskrit it means purified. So nahi jnane, so there's no uh, there's no purifier in this world equal to knowledge. So just like if you're sick, you suffer, you have pain, you're weak. And so in our spiritual life, if we sometimes we're suffering because of our attachments or our aversions, our frustration, or we have bodily pains, you know, you know there's lots of sufferings in this world, uh, which are all really just reactions to our former activities. And so Krishna, and so as you, if we purify ourselves, then we become free of the suffering. We let go of the bodily concept of life. And so Krishna says, there is no purifier in this world equal to knowledge. And Tatswayam Yoga Sang Siddha Kale Natmani Vindati. And a person who has been fully uh, perfected in, in yoga, Krishna consciousness, can personally enjoy and experience this pure state in time. And you experience it within yourself. 
So whatever people may think about you, whoever they think you are, or whatever position you have in the world, high, low, middle, just, you know, whatever other people may think about you, you will know that in yourself, you're having a great time. You're having a great life because you've been purified by knowledge and you've achieved your goals in Krishna consciousness. And in time, over time, within yourself, you experience this perfection. So who gets knowledge? Krishna says, I mean, he's already said that those who have knowledge will give you knowledge. You, you, you have to learn it from those people, from people with knowledge. You have to learn it by uh, pranipatena, by submission, pranipratena, by carefully inquiring, and sevaya, by service, by devotional service. So now Krishna gives another qualification to get this knowledge. He says, shadhavan. A person who really believes in it gets this knowledge. And the word here, of course, is shadha van, one who has real trust. You have to really put your heart into it. You have to really have that trust in this knowledge. And so if you believe in it, you will get it. Shadha van labate gyanam takpara. You have to make it the most important thing in your life. In other words, if you know that Krishna is God, you have to make Krishna the most important thing in your life. If you know that the only way to please Krishna or attain Krishna is by devotional service, then you have to make that the center of your life. That's what tat para means. Para means uh, supreme or highest and tat, that. You have to make that the center, the most important thing in your life. You can't, just, it's not just theoretical knowledge. If you want to really realize the knowledge, make it the center of your life. Act on it. Believe in it. Trust it in your life decisions. That's the idea. So, shadhavan labate gyanam tatparak sangyatendriyaha. And one has to fully control the senses. Yata means controlled. Just like in yoga, the first stages of yoga are yama niyama. So yama means uh, regulating the senses and regulated or controlled is yata from the word yama. And here sam means completely, so sam yata, fully controlled the senses, sam yatendriya. And then jnanam labdhva, having achieved this knowledge, then what happens? You got this knowledge, jnanam labdhva param shantim achirena digachati. Then you achieve the highest peace, achirena, uh, without delay, before long, achirena. So, I mean, we all want peace. Krishna says in the Gita, ashantasya kutaksukam. Uh, where is happiness without peace? It, it's just like nowadays you see some people think just agitating themselves is happiness, like just you know, get themselves all passionate and crazy. Uh, but to think that's happiness, that's that's not very bright. And of course, then they wake up the next morning and they're miserable. So um, that's not happiness. Excited, being like a little excited electron, uh, that's not happiness. Just being agitated is not happiness. Happiness is a deep, deep satisfaction, deep contentment and joy that comes from purity. So then, uh, finishing off here, there's two more verses in this chapter. Krishna says, actually three more verses. Krishna says, agyas means literally an ignorant person, unknowing, and ignorant is gya in Sanskrit, by the way, they're related. So ignorant, agya. So just an unknowing person, agyas cha, so an unknowing person, an ignorant person who is not trusting in this knowledge. And this is, it's translated very absolutely, you know, a person who's faithless, but the word ashadadana is, is actually a negative present participle, which will thrill many of you. So, in other words, the present participle means it doesn't mean one who doesn't trust. It means 
One who is not trusting. It's a continuous action. It's not that one time in your life you didn't trust. It means as a continuous attitude, one who is not trusting and who is ignorant. Sangshayatma, literally a doubting soul. A doubting soul. Sangshayatma, vinashati, is ruined, is lost. Vinashati, an ignorant, doubting soul who is not trusting in this knowledge is lost, is ruined. Nayang lo kosti na paro nasukam sangsayatmanaha. That doubting soul does not have, in the sense of does not achieve, does not have this world, nor the next world, nor happiness. In other words, there's nothing happening, nothing's gonna happen for that person. Not in this life, not in the next life, there's no, not gonna be real happiness. That's what happens when you doubt real knowledge. Then Krishna says, yoga sanyesta karmanam, jnana sanchinna sanchayam, atma vantam na karmani nibadnanti dhananjaya, which means, oh dhananjaya, karma, here in the plural, karmas, in other words, actions and reactions, do not bind someone who, by spiritual practice, has given up material activity, by spiritual practice, someone who by knowledge, by knowledge has completely cut off their doubt. And we all have doubts because we come to this material world to enjoy without Krishna. And do I really want to give up enjoying without Krishna? Do I really not want to be the sort of deluded center of my own crazy little world? And so Krishna says, one who's material activity has been given up through spiritual practice, who has completely cut off their doubts by knowledge. Atma vanta, this literally means one who possesses themselves. Atma van, like van means one who possesses, like Bhagavan. So atma van literally means one who possesses oneself. In other words, you discover yourself. You discover your real self as a pure soul. And then you can actually live your life as who you really are as a pure soul. That's what it means to have yourself, Atma Vantam. And so such a person, uh, material actions or reactions cannot bind that person, cannot capture that person. In the last verse of this chapter, in the last statement on knowledge, Krishna will end this chapter with another statement about knowledge. He says, tasmat, therefore. Tasmat literally means from that, from that, or therefore. Tasmat agyana sambhutam hritstam gyanasinatmana chitvainam sangshayam yogam ati stoti stavharata. Great verse. Krishna says, therefore, with the gyanasi, with, now we have another, we have the knowledge sword, we have the knowledge boat, we have the knowledge fire, now we've got a knowledge sword. I mean, this is really cool. This is really, it's fun. I mean, just, I mean, Krishna, the knowledge boat takes you over the, the ocean of suffering. The knowledge fire burns up all the trash in your heart. And then the, um, the here's the knowledge sword. So what's the knowledge sword going to do? The knowledge sword is going to cut off this doubt. So Krishna talks about doubt at 442, doubt, sangshaya, always use the same word, 441, sangshayam, 440, sangshayatma, twice. He actually says twice, the doubting soul. So uh, in verses, last three verses of this chapter, Krishna mentions the word doubt, some say uh, four times. He uses this word doubt four times in the last um, three verses of this chapter. So this is a big deal. So what's really stopping us from just surrendering to Krishna? Because we're not sure we should do it. If you were absolutely sure you should do it, you would do it. 
And so we don't do it because we still got doubts. Like, should I really do that? Am I really going to be happy? So that's the doubt that Krishna is talking about. Like, maybe there is something enjoyable in exploiting a dying body. So that's what Krishna is talking about. So Krishna says, you need a knowledge sword. And with that knowledge sword, you cut off this doubt of yours, this doubt of the soul, the soul's doubt. Krishna says, Atma, you cut off this doubt that's in your soul, this doubt which has arisen from ignorance, from agyana. It's knowledge because it's nice because in Sanskrit you say knowledge and unknowledge. Jnanam, agyanam. So it makes it very clear. So in other words, the jnana sword has to cut off agyana. The da- Actually, what Krishna really says here, looking at it more carefully in the Sanskrit, he says the doubt, the doubt which is within us has come from agyana. It's agyana sambhutam, which means that, it, that the, it's referring to sangshayam. And it means that the doubt has arisen from ignorance. The only reason we hesitate to surrender to Krishna is because of just ignorance, because we don't get it. We don't understand. And that's the only reason we hesitate to surrender to Krishna. So Krishna says, you want to you cut off a jnana, you need a jnana sword. You just need a jnana sword and then cutting off this doubt. And then he says, kind of these, uh, let's close that window. Krishna says, and this is really cool. I mean, Sanskrit is really fabulous. He says, atishto tishta varata. So uh, for all you grammar lovers out there, I got to explain this. Otherwise, uh, I won't enjoy my lunch. Okay. So tishta. Tishta in Sanskrit is the command to stand. Tishta, stand. Like, for example, typically in the Bhagavatam or Mahabharata, there's a battle and some Kshatri is telling another Kshatri, like, stop and fight. Like, stand and fight. That's what they'll always say. Tishta, stand and fight. And so here, Krishna is using two different prefixes with Tisha. Tishta. Atishta means kind of like stand in it, like stand in yoga. You know, like stand in it, get into it. And then utishta, ut means up. And, and so Krishna is saying, stand in it, stand up, which is really cool. That's literally what he's saying. He says, chitainam, he's saying, stand in yoga and stand up. In other words, just do it. Just do it. It's kind of Krishna saying in Sanskrit, just do it. So, Chitvainam, Sangshayang Yogam, Atishta, Utishta, Bharata. Atishta, Utishta. Stand in it, stand up. Uh, yogam, Atishta, Utishta, Bharata. I always love the, that, that last line. So, get going back now to this Bhagavatam verse, and then we'll end here. Uh, I mentioned all this because Krishna incarnates as uh, Atreya, which means the son of Atri. He comes as Atreya or Datta Atreya, which means Atreya who, whom the Lord gave to his parents, um, that incarnation. Um, he came to, and, and of course Atreya is not one of the most well-known avatars of Krishna, but still he taught on Vikshiki, he taught the systematic, serious study of knowledge through logic, through metaphysics. Metaphysics means what is right and wrong, what is the soul, what is God, those things. What's the purpose of life? That's metaphysics. And he taught it to famous people like Alarka and Prahlad. So uh, that's class for today. Let me see very quickly if anyone asked any question. Again, if you if you do have a question, you really have to put like about 5,000 question marks so I can see them. Uh, Let's see. If 
If there are no questions, I get to stop working. Okay, uh, here's a question. What is from Jagorangi Devi? Hope you don't mind if I mention your name. What is the cause that 90% of devotees who have lots of knowledge have a very hard, very hard like, uh, I guess you mean have a heart like a stone. So what happened in the heart of such devotees with that fire of knowledge? That's a really good question. That's a really good question because, um, because there's a difference between intellectual knowledge and realized knowledge. Uh, some people, the more they think they know Krishna consciousness, uh, the more they're kind of like, you know, really, I mean, of course, strict is good. Strict is good, but being kind of heavy with other people is not good in, unless there's a relationship where they want you to help them in that way. And so uh, real knowledge makes you feel more and more like you're everybody else. There's, there's a misconception that some people think that the more Krishna conscious I am, the more I separate myself from the world, the more, for, I mean, it can be the way I dress, the way I do everything, the way I do everything it has to be different than the rest of the world. Or if I'm an advanced devotee, I separate myself from other devotees because I'm advanced. That's actually going backwards. Uh, because according to Prabhupada's philosophy, it's the Kanishta Adhikari, it's a third class person who has trouble making real friendship with other devotees. The third class devotee worships the Lord in the temple and is very strict and does this ritual and that ritual and follows this rule and that rule. But it's just not always a nice person. It's not really like a person that, oh my God, this person is such a great friend to me. No. And so it's in the second class platform that a devotee uh, worships the Lord and makes friendship with devotees. A devote in the second class platform, you start to identify with other devotees and you start to identify with non devotees because you preach. That means that identify in the sense that you feel their suffering. You have empathy. You can't have empathy unless you identify with people. And Krishna says that in the Gita, Atmopam Yena Sarvatra. Samang Pashati Jorjuna. That empathy means when by comparison with yourself, Atma Upamyena, Atma Upama, anyway, Atma Upamyena, by comparison with yourself, you see the equality of all living beings. And so therefore, even though you may be more advanced, but you think, well, that's just, it's like, for example, let's say I'm in a family and I have a brother and I'm healthy today, my brother is a little sick. I don't think I'm better than my brother. I don't think I'm better than my brother because I'm a little healthier today. And, and so the fact that I may be a little, let's say spiritually healthier, doesn't mean I'm better. It doesn't mean I'm a more important person. It just means that I feel compassion. So in the second class platform, you actually become devoted to Krishna, not just as a deity, I mean, Krishna is the deity, but you actually realize, hey, Krishna actually is also outside the temple. He's in the heart of everyone. And so therefore you make friends with, with devotees, you care about non-devotees, you really care about them, you do everything you can to help them. And then in the, the, the first class platform, Paramahamsa, as Prabhupada always taught, uh, you see everyone as a devotee. And in a sense, you see yourself as, as less than everyone else. And so if you look at the progression from Kanishta Adhikari, third class, material platform, which is what the Bhagavatam calls it, Prakrita Vakta, material platform. If you look at the third class platform, as you go to second class, first class, you are more and more giving up your sense that you're different than other people. You are developing more and more empathy more and more you feel like we're all in this together, we're all souls. You see less and less difference between yourself and a non-devotee. Because it's the neophyte who's threatened by empathy with a non-devotee. Because if I kind of identify with non-devotees, I'm gonna become one again. And so empathy with non-devotees is kind of threatening because I'll fall back into my old life. So the stronger you become in Krishna consciousness, the more you have the privilege, the power to empathize 
more and more and more with all souls. And that's what Krishna says in the Gita. That samaksarveshu bhuteshu mad bhakti lavate param. When you empathize with every creature, every soul, that's when you achieve the highest bhakti. So this neophyte idea that the more strict you are, the more advanced you are, the more you separate yourself, devotees and non-devotees, even among devotees, you emphasize hierarchy because the hierarchy in ISKCON or any society, the hierarchy is based on the body. And of course also the soul because you could say, well, someone's a guru, someone's a disciple because right now at this moment, this person is more advanced. And so therefore that person should become a teacher. These are the parents, those are the children. Uh, there are natural hierarchies. But ultimately Krishna says you achieve the highest bhakti when you see the quality of everyone. So you can just make this little test. If you live in an ISKCON community or near an ISKCON community, is there more emphasis on equality or hierarchy between the devotees, between leaders and followers? Is there more emphasis on hierarchy or on equality? If there's more emphasis on equality, I mean, I don't mean you abolish the hierarchies, but is the real emphasis that we're all friends, we're all one. If that's the case, it's a truly spiritual community. If there's more emphasis on hierarchy, then you've got some people in high positions that still have something to learn. If the emphasis is on shut up and do what I say, or I'm better than you because I'm in a higher position. So um, anyway, here are questions. Oh, good old governor. No momento da entrega e recebimento do conhecimento, you all understand this. Quando um guru ensina seu discípulo como nesta aula online, este também é um momento de serviço de você ao discípulo, ou seja, ouvir de um mestre fidedigno e também servir. Okay, that's a good question. That's Portuguese translation. In, 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 at the moment of uh, surrendering and receiving knowledge, when a guru teaches the disciple, like in this online class, uh, is that also a moment of service, devotional service for the disciple? In other words, is hearing from a spiritual master, is that also devotional service? Uh, yes, it is. Of course it's service. But, I mean, I, I want to say yes and no. I mean, I don't mean that no hearing is not service because it is service. But what I mean is, what the heck is the guru saying? I mean, the guru is saying we have to save the world. We have to help other people. And so I would say, so if you, let me put it this way. Espero que você entenda inglês. I said, I hope you understand English. Um, if you are really hearing in a mood of service, then the proof that you really heard as a service is that you go out and you do what you heard. Se você está ouvindo realmente com atitude de serviço, a prova, a prova, a prova, a prova que você realmente escutava como serviço é que depois de escutar, você sai e faz o que, o que você ouviu. Isso é a prova de que Se ouvir, realmente foi serviço. Okay, questions. Very good. Very good. Ram Charrington, lots of question marks. Very good. So, uh, how to strengthen our faith? Is this something we achieve by rational deliberation or something which comes from above, perhaps as Krishna's grace or as a result of our sadhan or both? Um, I think it's all of those. We... Uh, one time Prabhupada said, you, you strengthen your faith by associating with faithful people. That's very important. If you, if, you, if you hang out with people that really believe in something, even something crazy, it's like, for example, let's say some teenager has some friends who say, hey, let's go out and drive stupidly and kill ourselves in our car. I mean, they don't say that, but let's go out and drive. And maybe one of the guys says, well, no, but come on, come on, come on. So because all your, you know, all the friends believe in it, so the person ends up believing it, unfortunately. So 
you know, th this whole thing that we're, you know, a man is known by the company he keeps, you know, Giga, con King will say anda. So we develop faith by our association. So it's very much by, by good association and also by reason. Because if you're blessed with intelligence and you just, you can reason your way also if you have experience in service, the combination of reason and, um, and service. Like Krishna says, in the, I mean, in the, yeah, the Krishna's in the famous verse in the Gita, 434, tad vidhi prani pati prasnena. really refers to reasoning because you're asking intelligent questions and you're listening to the answers. And Krishna says that if you are devoted to me, I give you buddhi yoga. So there's the answer right there. Krishna gives you buddhi yoga uh, or rational in spiritual understanding if you devote yourself. So it's all those things. It's actually all those things. Um, so what is it? Oh, I already answered that one. Question. Is simple jnana enough to get rid of all doubts or uh, should it be realized knowledge? Be jnana. Oh, Bhakti Priya, Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, as Prabhupada sometimes would say, book knowledge. I mean, we, because the knowledge is there in our heart. And so when you hear or you read or even when you speak, the knowledge that you are, say, speaking or reading or hearing actually is there in your heart. It's already there in your heart. And so you have to allow what you're reading or what you're hearing, you have to allow it to connect with your heart, with that same knowledge in your heart. You have to hear the knowledge and then find the truth of it within yourself. So that's what I would ask. Uh, that's what I would say. It's another question. May I ask about the doubting souls? Yes, you may. How should we proceed when the family context is unfavorable? Heard that one before. Souls who doubt at all times and insist on meat eating, ugh, heavy drinking, and so on. I try to respect these choices <laughs> and only being in a spiritual discussion when people are open for it, but at times it gets a bit difficult being in this context. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I could live with people who are uh, eating meat and engaged in drinking, not to speak of heavy drinking. I couldn't do it. I mean, maybe some people can do it. I'm not criticizing them. It's just we're different. I personally just ah, I couldn't do it. So I think we should, um, respect has to be mutual. I don't, be, I believe in mutuality. I believe in reciprocity. Even Krishna himself says in the Gita that he reciprocates. So if people, I respect people who respect me. I mean, I, I respect everyone in the sense, okay, you're a spirit soul. I won't do anything bad to you and what, I'll stay out of your way or whatever. So, I mean, there's a certain basic respect. But respecting people in, in a more serious sense, no. I can't respect someone's choice to eat meat or drink. I mean, it's not a respectable choice. It's an ignorant, self-destructive choice. I, I respect them as souls. I, I don't give up on them and all that. But, um, and, I, and if they respect you, they're not going to do it in front of you or they're going to say something like, okay, I'm going to eat meat now. You may not want to be around here. And so I think you need to be with people who reciprocate. So you you know they you respect them, but but they respect you. Otherwise, it's a weird situation. Okay, I have some of this real knowledge, appreciate it, and even realize some of it, but I'm not practicing properly. What can I expect my future to be? Oh my God, what's your future? Um, you'll have a good future because because you're doing something. I mean, something is a lot better than nothing. Uh, so just do your best. If you're doing your best, Krishna will work with you. I mean, you know, it's like my best and your best and someone else's best. It may not look the same, but someone who may not look like they're doing everything or maybe they're not doing everything, but they may actually be doing their best. And that means it's 100% sincere. So just make sure to yourself that you're really doing the best you can. If you are, that's really your best, and Krishna will take care of you. Um, 
See anything else? Keep those checks coming in. Okay, that's it. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure, although I, you know, we're just digitally connected here, but it's, I'm really happy. I feel very fortunate. I have a chance to uh, do this service. And we hope we'll see you next week. Next week, we're actually having a festival. Uh, it's my it's my 50 year anniversary of you won't believe this joining the Hare Krishna movement. So anyway, 50 years, <laughs> Hare Krishna. So I joined about this time 50 years ago in Berkeley, California. So uh, we're gonna have a little festival here. You're all welcome. It's in San Diego. Maybe a little late for some of you who haven't planned, but. So I guess we'll do something uh, next Sunday. So thanks again. I uh, hope you're all well. Hare Krishna.